So we're getting closer to the end of the year, or the beginning of the next year, or maybe the Earth is gonna stop spinning any one of these days. I don't know. The point is, we're at that part of the year where we're not really expecting any major changes when it comes to streaming hardware. The schedule is pretty much set. That's good news. It's less work for me, easier choices for you. So while we're all here, we're gonna take a look at the best of the best. We're talking from Apple, from Google, from Roku, from Amazon, and well, that's pretty much it. So I'm Phil Nickinson, this is Digital Trends. There's a subscribe button and a little notification bell here somewhere. You know to do those, right? Just start clicking them. Keep clicking them, because you wanna make sure you see every new video that we got coming out. So before we get too far into this, I actually wanna share a little bit of my philosophy when it comes to tech, okay? Now, whether we're talking streaming devices or TVs or computers or phones or whatever, I wanna spend as much money as I possibly can within my budget. I know that seems a little counterintuitive, but here's the thing. If I'm using it every single day, I wanna get the best I can for my money. So I'm willing to spend a little bit more. Your budget might well be different than mine, and that's fine. That's actually the point of this whole thing. And actually, I'm gonna ignore all the super cheap streaming sticks here, because the simple fact is, if you spend a little bit more, you're gonna get a much, much better value out of any of these products we're about to talk about. If you don't like that, you think I'm wrong, fine. Send complaints to Caleb at digitaltrends.com. He'll take care of you. All right, you ready? Let's go. These are the best streaming devices that you can get right now. So with that, let's start with Roku. Now Roku is actually the largest streaming platform in the United States. It's number two in the rest of the world, and for good reason, all right? It's super simple to use and it's really affordable. And Roku also has been around forever, that helps a lot as well. So it was founded in 2008, really as a way to watch Netflix on a non-smart TV. It's grown up a lot since then, but the hardware remains super affordable. You can actually almost always find something on sale for like 20 bucks, it's kind of nuts. But for my money, I'm sticking on the top shelf, and that means Roku Ultra. Now it retails for $100. If you're paying $100 for it, you're probably paying too much. It's almost always on sale too. So Roku Ultra isn't a stick, it's actually a box. It's about the size of two decks of playing cards. And while it's the best Roku device you can get, it's also not top of the line just when it comes to tech in general, and that's okay. It's got HDMI 2.0B and not the better HDMI 2.1. It's got a full ethernet port, but it's not gigabit ethernet. Now I'll have a little more to say about that in a second, just hang on. It also has Wi-Fi 5 and not the newer Wi-Fi 6 or even Wi-Fi 6E. It does, however, on the back of this thing, have USB 3.0, which is nice if you're gonna be plugging in some sort of hard drive to watch movies that I'm sure you paid for legally. And it supports Dolby Vision, HDR10, and HDR10+, and Dolby Atmos for audio, so that's all good. Now, some other things it has that you'll like. It's got a really simple user interface that hasn't changed much over the years. That bugs me, maybe it doesn't bug you. Point is, it's really easy for anybody to use. And Roku makes it really easy to watch things. Apps are called channels here, and Roku even has its own channel, which it calls the Roku channel. It's got all kinds of free series and movies, and they're making it easier to watch live sports, which is great. And if you like talking to your devices to tell them what to do, Roku has its own voice command system too. Now, one thing I personally don't really like about Roku these days is it's actually more advertising platform first and hardware company second. You're gonna see ads on the home screen. Maybe they're for other Roku products, or maybe they're for some other streaming service. Maybe they're for an individual show. Point is, you're gonna see ads and you're gonna kinda see a lot of them. And where there are ads, there's data about you. Now, I'm really not a tinfoil hat guy. I'm just not. But I am trying to minimize the amount of data that me and my family are just putting out there, okay? By the way, this is all true if you're using a Roku TV as well. The only difference is the underlying hardware is kind of stuck to that television, right? You can't upgrade it every year or two without swapping out the whole TV. But otherwise, you're going to get the exact same experience, and that includes the ads. All right, next is Amazon Fire TV. And as long as I'm ranting about Big Brother, it doesn't get much bigger than Amazon, does it? Uh, Amazon almost certainly knows more about you than you realize, and Fire TV has ads too, so let's just do the math there. In fact, it maybe even has more ads than Roku, or maybe it's just that they're in different places. You're gonna see them on the home screen. You're gonna see them tucked away into screensavers. It gets a little nuts, but just know that they're there. Now that that's out of the way, Amazon kind of plays the same game as Roku insofar as the hardware is concerned. You can get something cheap, like 20 or $30 cheap. Now, I think you should go a little more expensive. How much more? That depends. 
So at the top of the heap is Amazon Fire TV Cube. It got a refresh in late 2022 and is now on its third iteration. So it's added support for Wi-Fi 6E, which is good because faster is better and that'll future-proof it for a little while. It still has Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, but new is HDR10+. That's a spec that's really only important if you have a Samsung TV, but a lot of you do. Now this cube also adds an HDMI in port, which is interesting because it allows you to control other devices like cable or satellite boxes or even a gaming console that much better. The big selling point for Fire TV Cube though is that it's also an Amazon Echo device, essentially. And that means any of the voice command stuff that you can do in an Echo, you can also do here. Only now it's directly integrated into your television so you can control all of that directly with your voice. Plus, okay, it's fast and it has all of the apps that you could possibly want on a device like this. Now the user interface maybe is a little busy for my taste, but on the other hand, it gets you to all that Amazon Prime video content that much faster. Same goes for all the other Amazon stuff too, like say Amazon Music. That is a big deal, especially now that you can get it for free. All in all, what we've got here is a really good device that retails for $140. So it's not inexpensive, I get that. And it's a shame that it doesn't include the best Amazon remote that you can buy now. That's this thing, the Amazon Voice Remote Pro, and it's gonna cost you an extra $35. Come on, Amazon, put this thing in the box. Now, one alternate on this front is the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K Max. That's a lot of words for really is a $50 streaming stick. And if you don't need the integrated microphones and hands-free voice command Alexa stuff, that's probably what you wanna get, all right? I promised a little more on ethernet and let's just do that now. This is gonna get a little nerdy, I warn you, but it's kind of important. So like the Roku Ultra, Fire TV Cube has a dedicated ethernet port. And those two have what's called 10 slash 100 ethernet or also known as fast ethernet. And generally speaking, it's a good idea to plug in whenever you can. It's just gonna be a more stable connection and oftentimes it's gonna be faster than your Wi-Fi. It just depends on what you have though. But here's the thing, this 10100 ethernet standard is not the fastest available and it hasn't been for a long time. The fastest you can get right now as just a normal human being is called gigabit ethernet or 10100 1000. That's the gigabit part. So is that a deal breaker that it's not in Roku Ultra or not in the Fire TV Cube? I don't think so. Now look, I want the latest and greatest just like everybody else. And in fact, I think they should probably go ahead and put gigabit in these just because. But the simple fact is that the theoretical 100 megabits of speed that you're gonna get out of the Ultra or out of the Fire TV Cube, that's more than enough for streaming video. That's more than enough for streaming things in 4K. And that's true even if you're running multiple devices at once, all right? Most of these streaming services top out at like 30 megabits per second for streaming 4K video. And even then, it's not gonna be doing that the entire time that you're watching. Now, you might have some edge case that's different, all right? If you are streaming files locally from a hard drive or a NAS server, then yeah, you might wanna go with gigabit ethernet just because everything's gonna be faster and that's better. Fine, that's an edge case. That's not what we're talking about here. All right, that's the end of the nerd stuff. Let's get back to the hardware. Now that brings us to Chromecast with Google TV. Now that's an awkward name for Google streaming hardware. And this is the latest that you can get as of the end of 2022. Now Chromecast with Google TV is a full streaming platform. It's got all the apps, it's got all the services, it's got all the home control stuff that you'd want in this sort of thing. It's got all the searching, all the voice command, it's got all of Google in one place, all for $50. This is Google's TV solution, and it's really good, especially at that price. It's what I keep in my gear bag when I travel, actually, because it's small, it's really easy to use, it hooks up to Wi-Fi without any problems, and because it's so cheap, if I lose it, it's not really the end of the world. Now, like Amazon Fire TV, Google TV's user interface can get a little busy at times. But it's got all the apps and features you need, including Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, and HDR10 Plus for you Samsung TV users out there. Now, what's it missing? Well, things like Ethernet and expandable storage. It's Wi-Fi only for now. And a quick word of warning, there is a cheaper HD model out there that you can save, I don't know, 20 bucks on. Don't do it. It tops out at 1080p. And the simple fact is you're gonna have a 4K TV at some point. Just spend the extra money. You get a couple other little bells and whistles in there. Just, it's worth it. Now, while we're talking about Android-based devices, what about NVIDIA Shield TV? It's still around and it's been around for years. It's insane how well the hardware has held up. The hardware hasn't gotten a refresh since 2019. And that's sort of an eternity, Never mind how well it still works today. It's also still ridiculously overpowered, supports Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision, has gigabit ethernet, and a micro SD card for more storage. So it's still a beast. 
and it's really good for cloud gaming. NVIDIA's got a leg up on that, and it's still on the more expensive side of things at $150. And finally, we have Apple TV. Now, speaking of overpowered, this thing is running an A15 Bionic processor. Those are just words, it means nothing. Just know this, it is super overpowered for what you're generally gonna be doing with this thing, which is streaming apps, watching videos, stuff like that. Or maybe it's meant for something a little more. Think about gaming for a minute. Now there's a really good chance that by the time you finally watch this, gaming might be more of a thing on Apple TV 4K. It's actually been around for a while, but Apple hasn't really done anything super serious with it. But consider this, when Apple sent us a review unit of Apple TV 4K in late 2022, they sent it with a PlayStation 5 controller. Very, very interesting. So be on the lookout for more when it comes to gaming. And then there's smart home. So Apple TV 4K actually has done smart home stuff for a while now. It's been a home kit hub for years, but smart home tech is threatening to get a lot better in 2023 thanks to something called Thread and Matter. Now, if you haven't heard those two terms, don't worry about it. I hate talking about smart home standards because there have been a lot of them. The bottom line is this though, finally all the companies are settling on one thing that should theoretically make devices talk to each other so much easier without necessarily needing something like a router getting in the way. How well is that gonna work? We don't know yet, but the underlying tech is here in the new Apple TV 4K, that's important. So back to the hardware itself, there actually are two models here and you need to pay a little bit of attention. So one has 64 gigabytes of storage and is Wi-Fi only. The other one, and this is the one I think you should get, has double the storage at 128 gigabytes. It has gigabit ethernet, that's important, we just talked about that. And that is the one that has the thread and matter standards built in. The cheaper one does not. Now here's the thing, the cheaper one, it's only $20 less. Go ahead and spend that extra money and get the better version, just do it. So why Apple TV 4K? Well, for me personally, it's mostly because my entire family is all in on Apple. Now that didn't always used to be the case, but I've been using Apple TV even back when I was the only one on all things Android. You will get more things out of it with things like AirPlay and the excellent, excellent remote control integration with an iPhone or an iPad. Also, and this is maybe my favorite part, and perhaps it's a little silly, but the screensavers, like you see right there, they are so good. I could just sit there and watch them for hours. And at risk of sounding like an Apple shill here, and I absolutely am going to sound like one, it just works. It's simple, it's not trying to do too much, it's not working too hard at it, it's not throwing a million things at you on the user interface, and it doesn't have any ads on there either, at least for now, which is a really good thing. I enjoy that. I just wanna watch the videos, I just wanna watch TV, and Apple lets me do that without all those other distractions. Please, don't screw that up, Apple. And the hardware lasts forever. So my original 2017 Apple TV 4K finally died when it was struck by lightning. Otherwise, it was still exactly as good as the very first day I used it. So, you know, except for the lightning, I didn't need to upgrade it. Now it's not cheap at $150, I get that. But, and this goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning. This is something I use every single day here in the living room, also in my bedroom. And so I don't mind spending a little more on something that's just that much better. So out of all four things we've talked about, that to me is why Apple TV 4K is the best streaming hardware device you can buy at the end of 2022. So that's it. Thank you for making it this far. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. We will be back with more videos from Digital Trends. See you later.